So I promise you there's always trends in each field, you know, and, and most researchers just follow that trend, right? They, they just follow the crowd. And gaining insights from other fields allows you to not follow that trend and have more innovative ideas. Want to publish your research in high impact journals? Well, it goes without saying that you need a really good high impact research topic. And in this video, I want to show you how to find those topics regularly and share with you my secrets that have allowed me to be able to publish papers in Scopus Index Q1 journals. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers regularly publish papers in high impact journals. And if you're enjoying this video, hit the like and the subscribe button. Now, if you want a high impact research topic, the first thing that you really need to be thinking about is the research gap. If you don't know what a research gap is, I've got other videos on this channel where I explain it in more depth, but basically I'm, I'm going to break it down really simply to you here. A research gap is the justification for your study, is what gives your study the novelty, right? And there are basically four types of research gap. I'm not going to go into them in a lot of details. I do that in other videos, but there's lack or insufficient studies. There is limitations of previous studies. There is some sort of controversy or a lack of knowledge in your field, or there is a practical problem that needs solving. And ideally, you want more than one research gap that will justify your research topic. That's the key. So like if I could summarize what makes a high impact topic in one minute, it would definitely be the research gap. If you don't know how to find the research topic, start with finding the research gap. Now, an important nuance here that I think very few people talk about is that you want to find a big research gap. You know, try to find something that really hasn't been done yet or at all or very little, right? Why do you want to do that? Because that will give you an opportunity to publish not just one paper, but two, three, four, five papers. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do I do this, right? You know, my niche is already very saturated. There are a lot of studies in my field. And I'll talk about that in a second, you know, add insights also from other fields and thinking about what is it that people aren't doing at the moment. So usually in all fields, like people follow certain trends, you know, and there, there is this trend to do one thing, but for some reason, you know, just researchers forget about these other things. You want to go from here where there is a trend and everybody's doing the same thing to here you know, when nobody is doing this thing. And once, once you can find a big research gap, this really allows you to publish papers with greater ease in better journals. To give you one personal example of how I did that, well, my most recent papers have been about the, the representation of native and non-native speakers and white people and people of color at conferences for English teachers. And this, you know, comparing native and non-native speaker teachers in the classroom, it has been a very common topic in, in my field in teaching English. Like there are hundreds of studies on that. But for whatever reason, like it, it turned out that, that nobody had tried to address this issue at conferences. And me being a frequent conference conference speaker, you know, it always struck me that like plenary speakers at conferences for English teachers were white, British or US males, right, in the 50s. Like it's, it's really a trend, like go to a conference for English teachers and you will notice that, that like everybody is white and they come from an English speaking country, usually from the UK or the US, right, uh, as a plenary speaker. So that was the idea. And when we looked at the literature, like there was literally no study on that before in, in our field, in English language teaching. So th this means this opens so many possibilities for studies that like if I was a full-time researcher and at the moment I'm not, I'm an independent researcher and I run my business, Academic English Now full-time, but if I was a full-time researcher, like there could easily be like 10 papers on it. You know, you could write two PhDs probably on that topic because there's such a huge gap. And the first paper, it was so easy to place it in one of the best journals in the field because it's completely novel. Nobody had done that before, right? So it's a high impact research topic. It's very simple. So that's really the first ingredient, finding a really big research gap that allows you to see things that other people can't see, to be somewhere where no one else in your field is, right? And it also opens possibilities for a good research uh, paper pipeline, you know, because that gives you like ideas for three, five or more papers. Now, the second thing that you've got to do is also try to get insights from other disciplines, 
right? So what that means is that you know you you want to try to remain curious and try to read things from other disciplines because that will give you so many insights and that will help you to position yourself as I mentioned before with the research gap it will give you ideas how to position yourself like really kind of like outside of what everybody else is doing because I promise you there's always trends in each field you know and and most researchers just follow that trend right they, they just follow the crowd and gaining insights from other fields allows you to not follow that trend and have more innovative ideas that make a greater contribution so to give you an example of that like one of my most cited papers is a duo ethnography and a duo ethnography is basically like in very simplistic terms it's like an ethnography but for two people and that's why it's called a duo ethnography and with my co-author we had read some duo ethnographies in other fields and we noticed that you know they were also tackling the the, the topics that we were interested in which is like kind of um, equality discrimination and so on but then we also noticed that nobody had had done a duo ethnography in our own field in English language teaching right to tackle this specific type of discrimination that we were interested in so by reading from other fields and getting insights from outside of teaching English our own field this gave us a great idea that nobody else had and to be honest probably for a very long time nobody else would have had right and we wrote a paper a duo ethnography and to this date, it's my most cited paper ever, right? And the funny thing is that like it itself created a trend. Now there is a, there is a book, there, there is an edited volume on, I think it's called Duo Ethnography in English Language Teaching. And there are a lot of papers now that are Duo Ethnography. So like we, we just managed to start a trend. And I'm not saying it to boast or anything like it. I'm just saying it to show you how powerful you know, using insights from other fields can be to find high impact topics that nobody else is working on. Because, you know, again, if I was a full-time researcher, I could have continued with that idea for a duo ethnography for a very long time and published a lot of papers on that or, you know, supervised PhD students on that because there was nothing on it. And it was this, you know, just one insight from another field that allows you to kind of like position your paper as completely different. Now, the third, I think, really important ingredient to how to find high impact topics regularly is professional insights, right? Practical insights. So I find that, you know, too many researchers are, are locked in ivory towers of academia and not much in touch with what's going on on a daily basis, what practitioners are struggling with. And this you know further leads to that trend that I've already described that like people just follow the crowd and they do what everybody else is doing in the academia and it might ma make a lot of research far removed from practical problems that real people in the real world are struggling with right and this also means that it, it like like you're living in like a black box where you start knowing everything about literally nothing this means that like you're not seeing other topics and other like problems practical issues that need resolving and nobody else around you you know in your field is seeing them because everybody just stays you know in the same kind of research academic thing so that's why bringing in practical insights is very very important and again to give you a practical example uh, the two recent papers um, that I published are on the the, the representation of native native and non-native speakers as course book authors for books for teaching English, right? And I, I had this idea because I co-authored a, a book for teaching English myself. I co-authored a course book for National Geographic. And while working on this book, you know, and talking to other authors, it kind of struck me one day, you know, I was sitting in a meeting and then I noticed that like kind of, there were, there were like 13 of us in the meeting, counting all the editors and stuff like this. and it struck me that I was the only person for whom English wasn't the first language. So like everybody in the meeting was a native speaker, right? And practically everybody was either from the UK or the US. And also practically everybody apart from I think one or two people were white. And th this struck me and it stayed with me for, for, for quite a bit. And 
I started investigating the literature. I thought to myself, well, surely somebody has already investigated this issue, whether this is just the case or not. Like, I mean, it might be just my personal experience. Maybe it isn't true in general. Well, guess what? Nobody had done any research on that. Well, that's where my research then came in and it allowed me to easily publish two papers in really good journals in my field. And again, if I wanted to, I could have continued in this vein because there are so many potential papers and so many research angles that you could take on this very issue that you, know, you, you could really publish many papers for good journals on this specific issue. So that's why like having practical experience can really help see topics that nobody else in your field in the academia can see. Now, if you want more personalized help finding high impact research topics so that you can publish three or more papers every single year in top journals in your field, then definitely schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team where we're going to go over your biggest challenges, outline your goals, and then see how best we can assist you to achieve your goals faster and with greater ease. And the link to that consultation that is completely free is right below this video.